Welcome to my new tutorial. In this video, I will show you how you can create a GUI and use it with the ESP32. First, we go to square line, then to create, expressive, and then the display. Choose version 1.1.2. Now pick a theme. Now find a place to save the project. Now click on Create. The first thing you should always do is change the name of the screen. For our purpose we also need a second screen and the third one. You can now arrange the screens in any order you like. Don't forget to name the screens to make them easier to identify. I want to have a start sequence, so I will use this screen for that. To set the boot order, go to this menu. The screen at the top will load first. In my case, the screen with the name Startup. Now that we have the correct order, we need to create an event. Set the trigger for the event to screen loaded. And the action to change screen and click on add. Now select a screen to which you want to forward and the fade mode you prefer, plus the duration and the delay. In my case, I want to have a delay for one second. Now we add a label that will be shown when starting and center it and change the text to open controller. Don't forget to name the label. I want that the text appear bigger, so I change the font to a bigger one. Remember the font name, we will need it later. Now let's just try it out. Now you can see that it works, it will redirect to the home screen. Now let's edit the home screen. For my project I need buttons, so let's add them. I am now changing the size and the space. I now name the button and then set an event for it. Pick clicked as a trigger. And for the action choose change screen and edit. Now pick a screen. To make it user friendly we add a label to the button and also name it. The button is for changing to the second screen. So I will name the label switch. And for more readability I changed the font to 20. Now on the second screen I repeat the process to get back to the home screen from the second screen. Rename an order determine size and space and to make it easier to distinguish I change the color.
Let's add the same event, but with a twist that this time we change to home. The button also gets a label with the inscription switch. And a bigger font of 20. Now let's try it out. You can now see that when we press the switch button it goes to the second screen and vice versa. I want to have more buttons, so let's do that. I change the position, the height and width, and also the name. Let's also add a event, but this time it's a little bit different. First name the event, then copy the name and set the action to call function and click on add. Now paste the function name and click on do not export function. Now we add a label as with the others. This time I call it func1, like function1. And also add the font of 20. I want to have a slider, so I add that too. The configuration of a slider is exactly the same as for a button. Min and max are there to configure what kind of range a slider has. To see what value a slider has, you can create a label and display the value of the slider on it. For that, create a label then go on to the slider, add event and click set text value from slider. Click on add and for the target the label. Now let's see what we can do so far. We have the function button, the switch button to change the screen and the slider that changed the value of the label. I have also added a second button on the second screen, but I didn't want to repeat this again now. So this is now the GUI that we are going to use. Now that we have a working GUI, we need to export it. For this, go on export and then on create template project. A window should have opened, where you can select where you want to save the project. Now you need to import the project into the Espressive IDE as shown in the video. Please choose the exported project folder. Now we have successfully imported it. Let's try to build it. If you have an error similar to the one shown in the video, you can fix it like this. Click on SDK config, go to LVGL and then check 
that one that is missing or is too much. In our case we also need Montserrat 40. Now click on save. Now by building the project again we are get errors that there is missing or undefined functions. So let's write that missing functions. Most of the time I call this part state manager, but you can call it what you want. For the first function we write void and then the name of the missing function. Simply use the autocomplete function. Now we add curly brackets and display a text in the terminal when this button is pressed. Let's repeat that process for the second button. If you have forgotten the name of your button or would like to check it again, I will show you where you can find it. Simply go on UI and then on UI.C and there you have all your namings. Now let's complete our program. For these we go back to main. Now let's build it again to see if we get any errors. Perfect. Now let's try to get the slider value. There's already a function for that in NLVGL, but I like to get this by calling a function in my code and then read the value out of the label, because when I want to have a function added to it, I can simply write it down in my code. So let's add a function that is waiting for the call from the slider. To read the value out of the label, add a char variable and then fill it with the value from the label. Let's also print the value from the label into the terminal. Now let's run the build again. Oh, we got an error. Let's see what we did wrong. Let's go back to Squareline. First we need to check the project settings for the UI. Because when you change something in the UI afterwards, you want to have it directly changed in your project. So for that, override the UI export path to the new export path where your project is right now. So when you export your UI only, it's getting overwritten directly. After exporting and building the project, we still have the same error. This is because we didn't change the name of the label. 
We override the name with a button fill and can then use the name in the grayed out field for our function. If we now export the UI individually and build the project, everything should work. Now, after building and flashing the project on the controller, we can connect via terminal. And there you have it. When we push the function button, it will show a text in the terminal. And when we use a slider, the slider name and the value is also shown in the terminal. So, thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. When you have some questions, ask them in the comments. And I will see you next time.